So in today's episode, we discuss the connection between volunteering and workplace giving. What are those connections and how they help scale and grow your CSR programs? Let's make a social impact. Hi everyone, I'm Carl. Welcome to the Social Impact Show, where CSR professionals get the latest strategies and tips to help them scale and grow their CSR programs. Now remember, if this is your first time on this channel and you want to get the latest strategies from the experts, hit the subscription button below, hit the little notification bell so you're up to date. So today, I'm joined by Janelle St. Omer, Regional Vice President with Benevity, and today we're going to talk about volunteering and workplace giving. So you know, as someone new to this space, I keep hearing how volunteering is kind of like the gateway to workplace giving and, and also helping grow a CSR program. What do you make of that? Well, I think in many cases, Carl, um, you know, employees don't necessarily have a personal passion. They don't have a cause already that they're aligned to. So when they get out and they volunteer under a day of service, a work, a week of service or a month of service, that gives them the opportunity to understand, uh, you know, more about the organizations that are in their local community that perhaps they can make make a donation towards. Um, so it really helps, I, I would say, an employee to kind of dip their toe in to really understand what's out there and the potential impact that they can have. What we often see as well is when an employee goes out and has a really, really positive volunteer experience, they get to understand more about the organization, hopefully learn a little bit about the impacts of the organization and their operations, and then realizing that you know they could help do even more with their donor dollars towards that organization. So that's where we see the connection because you know it's one thing to go out and to volunteer, you know, one time or even on an ongoing basis. But the reality is nonprofits do need dollars. So if you if you see and you're passionate about an organization, you see the impact that your donor dollars can have, you are that much more likely to actually make a donation towards that cause if you've gone out and had a very positive volunteer experience. And obviously in in the the I guess the environment that we're in with pandemics and lockdowns, it's a little bit tougher to get someone out to actually you know, do physical volunteering. So what are some of the what have you seen in terms of I guess online or virtual volunteering opportunities that that have been used in CSR programs to, to mobilize that uh, and increase employee engagement? Well, many companies last year really did pivots everything to towards virtual. So, you know, so many companies will offer, you know, an annual day of service, an annual week of service, an annual month of service. And the inability for any of us to be in person at these organizations was really quite limiting. Um, so what we saw was a lot of companies, you know, working with organizations that they either had funded from a grants perspective or they're those, you know, long-term strategic partners to understand what kinds of needs they had and how those needs could then translate into to a virtual volunteer opportunity, so things that employees could do you know, at home, you know, on the computer outside of the organization. There are also a number of organizations that kind of have these, you know, evergreen virtual volunteering opportunities, which we saw a lot of companies promoting as well. But I think one of the biggest trends or the most interesting trends to me that we saw last year was companies expanding or redefining what it meant to be a volunteer. So not looking at an actual activity or action that happened on premises with an organization or even connected to a nonprofit organization, but perhaps, you know, looking at how I, Carl, am your neighbor and I'm going to, you know, buy groceries or, you know, really looking at what those random acts of kindness or random acts of goodness that also involve employee engagement could actually be. So we're seeing a lot more of that kind of expanded definition, even from a volunteer reward standpoint, you know, rewarding those kinds of, you know, acts of goodness, acts of kindness activities as well. Um, but I think, you know, any any employee can volunteer from a virtual standpoint. There are so many different opportunities with organizations that, that do exist. Or even just thinking about, you know, um, you know, small activities that you could potentially do, you know, in the privacy of your own home. And I think a lot more organizations were thinking about skills-based volunteering as well. So taking this time to really look at what are some of the perhaps strategic needs that an organization would have, you know, do they need their websites to be redone? Do they need, you know, their books looked at? Do they need, you know, a refresh of their marketing materials? Is there a problem that they want to, you know, bring a small cohort of employees together to actually help to solve for a nonprofit? 
nonprofit. Uh, this sort of virtual world really provided a great space for, for that level of uh, skills-based volunteering to happen as well, because we, we did have the opportunity to take a little bit more time and be a little bit more thoughtful and intentional about how employees were engaging with nonprofit organizations. And, and I guess, how do you keep, is it something where, you know, an employee needs to volunteer once or twice and then they get into the flow or is it always you, you continuously need to encourage those volunteer activities? Um, to ensure. It's, a, it's a little bit of both. It's a little bit of both. I think de- it all depends on the person. Um, so, you know, some folks can go out and they like to get involved and they like to, you know, be a part of their, the week of service every single year. And that's their volunteering for the year. That makes them happy. They're satisfied. Whereas other people, you know, they will get involved in a certain activity. They'll recognize the, some of the benefits. They'll see the impact that they can have. You know, they'll bond a little bit more with their colleagues, perhaps make connections with the organization and they'll feel inspired and compelled to want to actually get involved in a more you know ongoing basis and to do even more so it really does depend there's a range and I think that any company who is thinking about both your volunteering and your workplace giving programs you want to think about your employees along a spectrum of engagement and recognize that there's not a one-size-fits-all model for your employees you know some people might want to come out and you know do one activity once a year and that's it whereas you might have you know another employee who wants to volunteer every single Wednesday at the boys and girls club and everything in between and that's fine I think that the story or the narrative that you want to create internally is that all engagement is good engagement it's important engagement because there's a way that we all can impact the world around us, big or small, and see ourselves as, a, as that agent of change. And I think that that's the story that companies want to tell their employees is that they value, appreciate, respect, and encourage any engagement, whether that be from one hour of volunteering to one dollar in terms of making a donation. Are you seeing, um, in a previous video, I, I ta- we talked about how um, brands sometimes partner with um, other organizations, and then they leverage that partnership to encourage some volunteering activities. Like I think T-Mobile, T-Mobile and um, Feeding America. Is that something that, you know, you encourage CSR professionals to actually look for, like partnering with um, either nonprofits or organizations that, that would help encourage that volunteering activity? Yes and no. Um, yes, in that there are usually needs from a, a nonprofit standpoint in terms of, um, you know, having space for volunteers within their organization, whether that be, you know, one-time volunteerism or ongoing volunteerism or even skills-based or pro bono volunteerism. But I think the challenge a lot of companies face is having that expectation that when you partner with a nonprofit, they automatically will have stuff that's available for your employees. And that's an unfair um, expectation to have because some organizations are simply not set up to facilitate volunteerism, you know, workplace volunteerism, particularly, you know, those large numbers that, 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 you know, companies are often asking for, for their weeks of service or months of service. And I think you're doing a bit of a disservice to the nonprofit organizations in in those cases, because in many cases, they're spending time creating volunteer opportunities for the the corporations that they're partnering with, but it's not actually meeting the needs of their organization. It's taking them, you know, off their mission, perhaps it's taking them more time or, or even in resources in some cases to create these. So I think a big part of partnership, it partnership is wonderful. I think when, you know, corporations and nonprofit organizations can come together in a very meaningful way to understand, you know, how both sides can really bring value to the conversation um, and to really look at the impact that can be had. And I think to look at it in terms of equity as well and not sort of this deficit in that, you know, a company is going to help, you know, the poor nonprofit and such, but really thinking about what that partnership could look like. Um, I think that that's really where the beauty can happen. And yes, you know, volunteer opportunities can certainly come from that in some cases, but I think not having that expectation that that's um, immediately going to be a part of that partnership or forcing a nonprofit to make it so um, is really where corporations can actually have even greater impact, where you're actually partnering and wanting to understand the needs of the organization, whether that be from a fund you know, development standpoint, from a capacity building standpoint, or even from a volunteer standpoint, understanding what those needs actually are um, and then how you can partner to get the needs of that organization met, I think is, is the most successful way. So it does require a bit of a, a retraining of the brain because historically that's not how funder fundy relationships have really worked but I do see more and more companies approaching their partnerships that way and I think that that's lending to greater success and, and it, it goes to the point where like sometimes it kind of feels forced we're like well we partner with this company and we're kind of making them 
create these opportunities that they really never had. And instead of trying to find those organizations that actually truly need the activities that you know our, our employees can provide. Exactly, exactly. And I think that that is that forcing that is a challenge because it then becomes labor intensive on the nonprofit organization. You know, they have to, um, you know, sit here and design a, a day of service for, for a, a company that they might be working with. And the reason that charities do it is because they are fearful in some cases of, of not then receiving the dollars in terms of the partnership. So that's why really understanding what those needs of the organization actually are and figuring out what a partnership that's advantageous to both sides would actually should look like is really where you know companies and nonprofits need to start. And yes, if there are volunteer needs, absolutely for a charity to sort of you know partner with an organization, bring some of their volunteers in. But I think too, even in that case, even if they do have a volunteer program, it's really understanding the mechanics of that volunteer program. Is it perhaps more skills based? Is it perhaps they only need one to two volunteers a month, but it's not ever that they're going to have the need for this great big day of service. You need to really think about that. And I think if that's what a company wants to do, there are ways to think about how you can essentially have a charity be a recipient of your day of service without facilitating your day of service. So as an example, if you're working with a small homeless shelter, as an example, and they don't have the opportunity for you know 50 employees to come in, you could do a kit packing on site, you know, at your office or, you know, facilitate employees doing a kit packing at home where they're then building, you know, hygiene kits, you know, with toothpaste and toothbrush and socks and, you know, combs and brushes and all those kinds of things. And then you can donate all of those items to the nonprofit organization. So it's something that you can do on mass with a larger number of employees, but you're not requiring that organization to facilitate the planning for you. Um, So there are different ways that you can really think about. And I do encourage, you know, companies to think a little bit differently about your needs as it relates to employee engagement and these large volunteer days and the needs of the organizations that you're working with and and how you can actually meet those needs without you know creating even more tension. And remember, if you're getting value from this video, we'd really appreciate you hitting that like button. And the question of the day for you is, have you run any volunteer campaigns or activities in your organization? And how have you maximized participation and get employees involved? Let us know in the comment section below. So Janelle, do you have anything else to add in terms of um, volunteering and uh, growing your CSR program? Yeah, I think volunteering is a really critical part of of CSR overall. I think from that employee engagement lens, I think volunteering allows employees to get a better sense of what's out there in terms of, you know, need, understanding, um, you know, the things that are are shaping their community, understanding the organizations that perhaps might be in their localized area. And I think from a employee engagement standpoint and looking at, you know, what companies are trying to do, kind of infusing that culture of purpose and inspiring that employee action, volunteering really does help to do that. It can help to build teams, um, you know, really cohesive teams. It can help to sort of break down silos within the organization. Um, so perhaps you actually have volunteer opportunities that will happen, you know, across uh, across different business units within your company. Um, so there's a lot, a lot of benefits to volunteering overall as part of the strategic, you know, part of your CSR program. And it really can fuel things like your workplace giving. In some cases, it can help with your sustainability. If you're looking at how your employees are involved in, you know, green activities, it also can drive your diversity, equity, and inclusion activities as well, whether that be volunteering with your employee resource groups or volunteering, you know, with particular organizations that will, that will serve um, a diverse population. Um, so there's so many ways that volunteering can really help. And there's, you know, even been studies to say that volunteering is linked to employee health, employee retention, employee performance, you know, employee absenteeism. So from a company standpoint, there's a lot of benefits to volunteering. From an employee standpoint, there's a lot of benefits to volunteering as well. And then from a charitable standpoint, really having a volunteer program that is designed to meet their needs. Volunteers really can help to provide a lot of capacity to charities and really help them to do more with less. Um, if done well, if done right, and really focus on the need of that organization and their service recipients. And remember, if you want to learn more about other workplace giving strategies and tactics, you got to check out this playlist here, as well as this playlist for other strategies on growing your CSR program. Thank you very much for watching. We'll catch you in the next episode.